For Denmark, the sea is first and last, because the sea is forever at her door. When the ice of the Ice Age retreated, the land rose out of the sea, and wind and water shaped its coastline. For the Danes, the sea has always been their doorway to the world, the doorway for those on Viking raids or more peaceful errands. Nature formed this land, but nature has not been kind to Denmark. No fuel, no water power, few natural resources. The sea brings mild winters and plentiful rain, but the soil itself is by nature far from fertile, and the country rests upon a mattress of chalk. Such is Denmark and Europe. But part of Denmark lies far out in the Atlantic, the islands known as the Faroes. Further out still is that other Denmark, which is the great plateau of rock and ice called Greenland. But there in Europe, close to neighboring Norway and Sweden, is the Danish homeland, some 500 green and friendly islands and the long peninsula of Jutland. Here on the western shores of Denmark, the weather is bleak and conditions hard. But battling against these difficulties are a people stubborn and enduring. People who still live from day to day that simple and frugal life in which the Danish nation has the very roots of its being. Further to the east, nature is kinder and the soil more fertile. Here, life is easier, and in its beauty, the country reflects its well-being. If a community made up of 500 islands is to know unity, it must have good communications. Bridges and more bridges ferries and more ferries linking islands large and small. The waters around the Danish islands are alive with ferry boats, some large enough only for a few people and their farm produce others capable of taking the heaviest forms of transport. Even over the widest expanses of water where the voyage may last several hours, cars and trucks are ferried. So that with the passage of time, each Danish harbor has become a hub for roads reaching out to every inland town and village. Towns old and beautiful where life flows at a gentle pace all its own. But towns where market day is like anywhere in the world, the climax of the week, a day of get together for talk and trade. And whether you come by road or by water, you are still a neighbor. For most of the cities of Denmark have grown up around the water. Out of a total of 85 Danish market towns, more than 70 have harbors. Arlborg and Fredrikshavn, Svendborg, Horsens, Esberg and Korsø, and each is a center of communication. But as in any country in the world, all roads lead eventually to the capital. So the greater part of the train, road and ferry traffic moves toward the largest of Denmark's homeland islands, one linked with the south by the Storstroms Bridge, the longest in Europe, a bridge taking lorries and trains side by side. Traffic 
with but one destination, Copenhagen. Out of a total population of four million Danes, a million live in Copenhagen. The city has grown disproportionately large and vital imports of raw materials put great strain on harbor space and dockside wharves. The oldest part of Copenhagen lies on a few small islands so that the sea penetrates into the very heart of the city, bringing to the streets and busy squares the swoop of gulls and the tang of salt water. Even the king's residence lies in sight of the busy port and its teeming life. Looking down too upon the water is the Christiansborg, the home of Denmark's parliament, a building for whose construction each parish in the country sent a stone. On special occasions, the king, accompanied by the queen, attends parliament. King Frederick IX is one of a line going back for a thousand years, a direct descendant of the very first monarch known to have ruled over Denmark. I dag indledes et nyt afsnit i den danske folkerepræsentations historie. Denmark has never known a revolution, and the present free democratic constitution is more than a century old. These are representatives from the former colony of Greenland, now a part of the Kingdom of Denmark. Among members of parliament and local councils, there's a healthy clash of opinions. But on many points, there's a strong feeling of national solidarity. It has become the national policy of Denmark that none of her citizens shall suffer needlessly through age or sickness that each shall have the best possible opportunity of achieving a full life and, having achieved it, bear its climax without pain or need. Keystone of these social services is primary education, compulsory for all citizens since 1814. The Danes believe that the large sums they spend on teaching, health services and old age pensions are more than repaid in the development of a community which enjoys happy living. In its drive for better health, Denmark has taken up arms especially in the battle against tuberculosis. And today that scourge has been all but mastered. So beds in Danish sanatoria are kept not just for patients from Denmark and Greenland, but also for children from other countries. For Denmark does not confine her fight against disease to her own frontiers. Vitamin products, penicillin, insulin, and many kinds of serums and vaccines. All these are part and parcel of Denmark's contribution to world health. The very smallness of Denmark has enabled her to keep close check on the health of her own citizens. And what she has learned, she has passed on to others. It was the Danes who supplied the materials which enabled the United Nations to carry out TB tests upon 65 million of the world's children. The battle against tuberculosis was really one when the disease was stamped out among Denmark's livestock by the vaccination of all dairy cows. Cleanliness and control have always been the ruling factors in Danish farming. Extensive use of fertilizers has made Denmark's soil fruitful. Devoted care and attention to quality 
have made the country's dairy produce famous throughout the world. The housewife who buys this butter recognizes its value by its Danish stamp and its perfect wrapping. Small though Denmark is, only two countries in the world export more cheese than she does. Control and quality. Danish eggs are exported by the million, while thousands of Danish chickens find their way to the dinner tables of many countries. A Danish stamp on a ham or a carcass is a mark of quality and an amazing uniformity. Only 800,000 Danes earn their living through agriculture. Nevertheless, they produce two-thirds of the nation's exports. And this in a country almost entirely dependent upon imported raw materials for industry and agriculture a fact which speaks much for the efficiency of Danish farming. The farmers of Denmark have known bad times in the past, times when they learned that only by sticking together could they win through. And so was developed a voluntary cooperative system which is still today the very backbone of Danish agriculture. But the key to this and all progress in Denmark has been the emphasis placed upon education, not only of the young, but also of the mature. A people living in a community of 500 islands has learned that to be of the world, one must know about the world. To a Dane, reading is one of the great occupations of life, whether the library be in his own town or village, or floats across the water for him to make his choice. And knowledge makes for good craftsmanship, bringing to all Danish work a fine blend of individuality and tradition. Here, good design combines the best of both worlds, the world of today and that of yesterday. And though now in Danish factories more and more machines are taking the place of hands, nevertheless the stamp of craftsmanship remains, whatever the product. The Danes believe, too, that people work best in pleasant and harmonious surroundings. They say that a happy worker makes the most efficient and the most skillful, whatever his trade. The building of wooden ships was once the basis of the Viking conquests. And though today most materials for ship construction have to be imported, the Danish merchant navy, chartered by nations all over the world, is thriving and prosperous. Within a stone's throw of the humming shipyards of Elsinore is the ancient castle of Kronborg perhaps best known as the scene of Shakespeare's Hamlet. But Kronborg's real role in history was its command of the sound dividing Denmark from neighboring Sweden. Ways of war have changed since the days of Kronborg's cannon, and the waters which are the vital entrances and exits to the landlocked Baltic are today patrolled by efficient and speedy Danish MTBs. The defense task of these naval forces is a responsible one, for Denmark has a coastline nearly three times as long as that of France. Well-trained regular land and air forces are backed by a voluntary home guard, 
ready should the need arise to become full-time soldiers overnight. Denmark believes that she has much that is worth defending. And like her partners in the 15-nation Atlantic community, she believes too that a nation's idea of living is its own affair. A flag flown in Denmark. Well, generally, that just means we're at home. And a fine Sunday means family allotments and summer houses. Leisure for a Dane is being near the soil or near the sea. And in Denmark, the sea is never very far away. And a Sunday in Copenhagen generally ends up with an evening at the Tivoli, the world-famous pleasure garden in the heart of the capital. Here, the maxim of Danish life finds practical expression. For in the Tivoli, each can enjoy his pleasure in his own way, and yet leave room for others to do the same, however different. And the Tivoli offers the widest possible choice. It was an old Chinese philosopher who once said that patriotism is directly related to one's favorite dishes. But it could have been a Dane. Good living and appreciation of good living. This is the Danish way. For Denmark, the sea is first and last, because the sea is forever at her door. The sea that is a living symbol of the space and freedom that all Danes believe in and strive for. The sea which is Denmark's doorway to the world, and the world's doorway to Denmark.